Okay, so yeah, the GPD Win 4 handles Steam OS 3 like a boss. I mean, it's just really awesome to see the Steam Deck's operating system running better on this smaller device. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at SteamOS 3 running on the brand new GPD Win 4. Now, if you're not familiar with this device, I've done one video on it, checking out some Windows performance. If you're interested in seeing how it performs in Windows, I'll leave a link for that video down below. But basically what we've got here is an x86 powered gaming handheld. This is actually using the new Ryzen 6800U, so we've actually got a lot of power. And as you can see here, we've got a beautiful 6 inch HIPS display. Display. And I've managed to install SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS. It's the same operating system, but I'm using kind of a variant called Hollow ISO. Basically, they've taken the Steam Deck recovery image and reworked it so we can install it on other systems. And I gotta say, it actually performs really well on the Win 4. And to my surprise, I mean, everything here is working with SteamOS 3 except for the fingerprint sensor that GPD added to the Win 4. And that's kind of a given right now because SteamOS doesn't offer an option for a fingerprint sensor. It would be pretty cool to have a login like that, like we do with Windows on the Win 4, but right now it's just not implemented in the OS. But we've got everything up and running here with no modifications to the operating system. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the built-in controls, the keyboard, and even the optical trackpad on the Win 4 are working in Steam Deck OS, and it's a really pleasant experience to use it on this handheld volume control, and uh, when it comes to the speakers in the Win 4, these are some of the best that I've heard in a handheld. I mentioned that in my first video, but it's really hard to ignore. These things are super clean, very loud. We've got that QWERTY keyboard here. Everything's working. I mean, the operating system detects it as a regular keyboard. Like I mentioned, we've got that optical trackpad right here. And this is something I've been getting used to. It works out really well in Windows, and it fully works here with SteamOS. We've also got touchscreen functionality, and obviously the built-in controls and buttons are working here. And one of the cool things about the GPD Win 4 is we have a dedicated menu button, which is kind of mapped as an Xbox Home button. So we can actually bring up the menu and the performance overlay really easily in this operating system on the Win 4. Now before we get into testing here, I wanted to give you a quick rundown on the specs because this might be the first time some of you are seeing this. But when it comes to the CPU, or rather in this unit, the APU, we've got the AMD Ryzen 7 6800U. 8 cores, 16 threads, and we've got a clock up to 4.7 GHz. This is utilizing the Radeon 680M iGPU. We've got 12 compute units, it's based on RDNA 2, and we've got a clock up to 2200 MHz. You can opt to pick this up in a couple different storage and RAM variants. 16 GB to 32 GB of LP DDR5 RAM running at 6400 MHz. This one here is the 32 gigabyte model. You can also opt for a one or a two terabyte M.2 SSD right out of the box. We've got that six inch HIPS display with a resolution of 1080p. It's got an aspect ratio of 16 by nine and it actually fully supports a few different refresh rates. So we don't have to do any kind of modifications or anything like that. We can go to 40 hertz, 60, or at 1080p we can go to 75 hertz, but 40 and 60 will work at any resolution. And this is using a 45.62 watt hour battery with 65 watt fast charging capabilities. Now there's a lot more to this handheld. If you're interested in checking out the full specs, I'll leave a link to their website and Indiegogo in the description. But let's go ahead and check out SteamOS 3 on the GPD Win 4. All right, so check it out. This little menu button over here comes in really handy. We can head right into settings just by pressing this once, or if we press it and A at the same time, it'll bring up our performance menu. We can actually turn on our overlay if we want to. And we do have system-wide FSR. The only thing from this menu here that won't work with the GPD Win 4 right now is the TDP control. And unfortunately, at the time of making this video, we don't have an easy to use third-party application. In the past, we were able to use an application called Crankshaft, and then from there, we could install handheld power tools, which was really great because we could change the TDP on the fly, and we could actually turn off multi-threading and even CPU boost, which really helps out with battery life. But with the latest updates of Steam, Crankshaft no longer works, and the developer is working on a way to get this up and running with something like Decky. So at the time of making this video, the easiest way to control the TDP in Linux is actually from the BIOS on the Win 4. And right now I'm at 15 watts, and in this video we will be testing a few games at 15. We're also going to go down to 7 for an indie game, and then we're going to take it up to 28. That's what GPD and a lot of these manufacturers consider gaming mode on the 6800U. 
All right, so first up, we've got Doom Eternal, 720p low, and I've got the TDP set at 15 watts. We can get up there in the 80 FPS range here, and you know, when it comes to a handheld, locking it at 60 is the way to go for battery life, but I kept this one unlocked, and it's doing a great job at 15 watts, but if you're familiar with these new Ryzen 6000 chips, you know they love a little more than 15 watts, and it really comes down to having four more cores than the Steam Deck, and a higher clocked iGPU. So, uh, you know, taking this up will increase performance, but I wanted to keep it right there. And here's Left 4 Dead 2. Now with this at 15 watts, we can run it maxed out at 1080p and we've got a 1080p display here, so it does work really well. But uh, in order to kind of keep that power down and save battery, we're gonna go ahead and lock this at 60 and it's gonna run it like this all day at 1080p maxed out. I mean, it's an older source game. It's gonna run all of these just fine. And when it comes to 2D games and indie games, I mean, we can take this down to 7 watts. Here's Shredder's Revenge, and we can run this at 60 FPS. And we could probably even go down to 5 watts with a game like this. And, you know, with this setup at 15 watts, we're going to get around the same battery life that the Steam Deck does. But this does have a lot more to offer, and it's going to come at a cost of battery life. Because, uh, like I mentioned, this Ryzen 7 6800U does like a little more wattage. So I just went ahead and took it up to 28 watts from the BIOS, and of course we're going to get a lot less battery life going uh, up to 28 from 15, but here's The Witcher 3, and by the way, this is the uh, latest update, and they have implemented FSR in the game itself, so we should actually see a really nice jump in performance on the real Steam Deck with this game. I've actually got it installing right now, and I can't wait to test it out, but as you can see, it does perform quite well on the GPD Win 4 at that 28 watt TDP. Now we could take these settings down at 15 and still get a nice little 60 out of it, but I wanted to go up with the wattage. Next up, I've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, and with this I've actually locked it at 40 hertz. Remember, we've got that 40 and 60 hertz display here, so it actually does perform really well. And I don't have FSR on right now, and we're at a medium high mix. So at 28 watts, we can get a much cleaner picture out of this game. And I'll tell you what, this APU can run this game at 60 FPS, but we need to go up to around 35 watts, and even then we're going to be at low settings with FSR set to performance. Uh, one of my favorite racing games, still, we've got Project Cars 2, and we're getting over 100 FPS, medium settings, 720p. This is one of those games I would usually just lock down at 60, and I probably just should have taken this up to 1080 and lock it at 60. It will run like that quite well at 28 watts on the GPD Win 4. And finally here, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 720p, low settings, and we've got FSR set to balance. We can actually get over 60, this average 71 FPS. With all of the new updates that Project CD Red has put out for this, I mean, this does perform really well on these APUs now. So overall, SteamOS 3 does run really well on the GPD Win 4, and you know, in order to get better performance than the Steam Deck, we just have to put a little more wattage to it, but we can kind of match the performance at 15 watts with this unit right now. And in the end, I mean, it's totally usable, but in the future, we will see more optimizations for SteamOS 3 when it comes to the 6800U on basically any handheld or laptop with this chipset. But personally, I'm just super happy to see that everything on the Win 4 out of the box is working with SteamOS right now. It's just a matter of time before we get the tools we need to get those optimizations set up with these power profiles and this APU with this operating system. And with those tools, even at 15 watts, we can see a nice boost in performance on the 6800U because basically what's happening here is, you know, it's kind of a power struggle between the CPU side of things and the iGPU side of things. We've got eight Zen 3 Plus cores and that 680M iGPU fighting for 15 watts and there's really just not enough there for the clocks that they want to go up to. So with some optimizations or even just the third party application, we can set the clock on the iGPU, we can set the clocks on the CPU or even tell the CPU not to use four of the cores. We can go ahead and park those. And in turn, it won't be such a power struggle at 15 watts, but yeah, I mean, definitely taking the wattage up on the 6800U really does kind of liven it up, but we've also got battery to worry about. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the GPD Win 4, I'll leave some links in the description. You can actually go over to the Indiegogo right now and back this. And who knows, I mean, by the time this releases to the public, we'll have those optimizations we've been talking about with SteamOS. 
I will have a couple more videos coming up with this handheld. We're going to do some eGPU testing and a full emulation video. So if you're interested in seeing something like that, it'd be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn on notifications so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.